And we're back, folks, with another review for WWE Vengeance. I'm Graham Jason Matthews right here on WrestleRant, breaking down all the pay-per-views that I watch on the WWE Network. And today we're talking Vengeance 2004, continuing the strong streak of great installments for Vengeance. Opening the show, a tag team match, Rhino and Tajiri taking on John and the Coachman and Garrison Cade, later known as Lance Cade, of course. Fun little match, only stemming from the hilariously memorable, uh, the, uh, what was it called? The steel, oh, fuck, what the fuck is it called? The um, musical chairs bit, that bit, I don't know why I almost said, I, I really wanted to say steel chairs, and technically it was steel chairs, but the hilariously memorable game of musical chairs and Monday Night Raw, that's where this was stemming from, the whole feud between Tajiri and John and the Coachman. You would think that this would have been a, a shit show just because John and the Coachman was involved and he wasn't a wrestler. He actually made it more fun. The coach was fucking great, and I always love to praise him and whatever he's involved in because he made anything that he was involved in. Whatever he touched turned to gold, despite the fact he was not a real wrestler. Um, he made anything he was involved in ten times more entertaining, so this was good. Good stuff. In the end, Rhino to Jerry picking up the victory as they should have. I have no idea why Cade was Coachman's tag team partner, though. That felt kind of random. But um, it was what it was, just a uh, fun match to kick off the show. After that, Batista versus Chris Jericho. Their feud kicked off on Raw a few weeks earlier. Um, a good match, not a great match, but it didn't really need to be a great match. I mean, Batista was just coming into his own as a singles guy at that time that he just needed someone to work with to kind of get off his singles push on the right foot. And I thought Jericho was the right guy for the job. I mean, look, look no, you know, look no further than John Cena two years earlier, Vengeance 2002. You know, Cena's real first feud in WWE was with Chris Jericho beating him at the Vengeance 2002 pay per view, and I believe this was Batista's singles debut on a singles pay-per-view debut so Jericho a lot like John Cena was the per per perfect person to work with at uh, Vengeance 2004 producing a good match I've seen it like a million times before because it's on Batista's DVD um, but good stuff in the end Batista scores the victory Jericho's foot was on the rope they didn't acknowledge that that would keep the feud alive going to SummerSlam where he Jericho and Edge would face off in a triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship so good shit there and the right outcome too for the World Tag Team Championships, a lot of resistance defending against Eugene and Ric Flair in a very fun match. I mean, Eugene, the character was only gonna, was only going to go so far, but for what it was, for as long as it lasted, it was a guilty pleasure of a gimmick, and I thought the dynamic with Ric Flair was fucking fantastic. Um, Ric Flair, when he came out, I'm thinking, why is he a babyface here? But it was all because of Eugene. It was, you know, guilty by association, I guess. Babyface by association and teaming with Eugene. So a fun match. Eugene just went ballistic on La Resistance, pushed the referee away, got himself disqualified. So La Resistance won the match and retained their tag team titles. But Eugene went nuts on them anyway, went berserk on La Resistance, biting a stunner and a rock bottom. Um, again, a fun character. He was really the focal point of the show. I'll get more back to Eugene in the main event. And he was, they, you know, they cut to him backstage like two or three times throughout the night. So I don't know if I really agreed with that. And I'll talk more about that when I get to the main event. But as far as this match goes, fun shit. After that, Matt Hardy versus Kane in a no DQ match. The whole story behind this matchup was that uh, Kane had impregnated Lita by attacking her. And the whole reason why was apparently if Kane, you know, Kane promised that he would stop hurting Matt Hardy as long as he probably had sex with her or something. She said yes. They didn't know if the baby was Kane's or Matt Hardy's, so we had this match. It was a good match. I thought the match at SummerSlam, the, as stupid as it was, till Death Do Us Part match was better than this. Just This kind of felt just a little hokey and slow. Um, but in the end, Matt Hardy picking up the victory after interference from Lita, scoring the victory, and that would help make up for the loss that he would suffer at the hands of Kane at SummerSlam, just because I believe Matt Hardy got legitimately hurt, so he couldn't win the feud anyway. Um, not a great match. I thought the SummerSlam match was better, like I said, kind of slow early on, but good for what it was and uh, the right outcome this early on in the feud. After that, Edge and Randy Orton taking on each other for the Intercontinental Championship. Randy Orton, the defending champion here. Great match. I mean, I think it's also, depending on who you are, depending on how much you're going to enjoy this match. Because I feel like early on, it is slow. It does drag a lot early on, a lot of fucking headlocks, and they're trying to build Edge up as this next big baby face, the next breakout baby face. Didn't quite work out that way because the fans, you know, rallied against him. They were not really the biggest Edge supporters, the biggest Edge heads, I guess I, I should say. Um, he did not get the biggest reaction here. I think it's more of an indication, more of a reflection on Orton and how over he was organically with the fans than Edge was at that time. And he put even at SummerSlam when he defended the IC Championship against Jericho and Batista, they got booed out of the building. So they had to embark on the, you know, the, uh, the heel turn later on that year, which was for the better, obviously, for Edge, all things considered. 
But um, I thought that was interesting, an interesting dynamic here. He was on his way back from injury, and he challenged Orton for the Intercontinental Championship, and it came out to be a great match, almost a half an hour long for an IC title match, which is almost unprecedented. But uh, great stuff. I mean, early on, like I said, a little bit slow, but down the stretch, some really, really good technical wrestling, some great reversals. In the end, Edge is the one to break Orton's long-reigning reign as the Intercontinental Championship, his long-standing reign, rather, as IC champion at almost... What was it? Orton won the championship in December, so almost seven months as Intercontinental Champion did uh, Orton have that championship for us, so great shit, and it really felt like a big moment that, you know, he was sulking, he was like, oh, why, my reign's over, like, it really felt like a big deal when Orton eventually lost, and it was a big win for Edge, despite the fact that we're trying to build him up as a babyface, didn't quite work out that way, but the match itself was great. And it was a big moment for Orton that would allow him to kind of sink right into the main event scene going into SummerSlam in the World WWE Championship picture. After that, for the Women's Championship, Victoria taking on Molly Holly, or rather a number one contenders match for the Women's Championship. And probably the best women's match of Vengeance up to this point, which isn't saying much, I know. But it was a good match at the time they got. In the end, Victoria won. New number one contender to the Women's Championship. Nothing great, but like I said, the best women's match in Vengeance history up to this point. And then we get the main event. For the World Heavyweight Championship, Chris Benoit defending the gold against Triple H. And a really, really good match. It went to hell as soon as Eugene came in, and it was overbooked as shit from that point. As soon as the ref bump happened... Um, I just didn't agree with the fact that the whole story had to be around Eugene, setting up Triple H and Eugene for SummerSlam. I mean, Triple H went from main eventing WrestleMania and competing for the World Championship on this show to facing Eugene at SummerSlam. And it was not a promotion for Eugene. He lost that match. And then after that, he was done. He was basically done in WWE. They had fun with him over the next year. I know he faced Kurt Angle in 2005. But beyond that, the Eugene character was dead. It had a very short shelf life. Uh, but this match, everything else before that, and the, the whole story they were trying to tell was whether Eugene was on the side of Benoit, or he was going to be manipulated by Evolution and help Triple H retain, or win back the championship, rather. In the end, Eugene saw the light, he helped Benoit retain the championship, and he was still World Heavyweight Champion. But Eugene aside, the match was really, really good. Um, Benoit and Triple H had great chemistry together. But it's just a shame that Benoit's entire reign as world champion was basically against Triple H. Like, I think he had one other title defense. I mean, the whole triple threat match at, you know, Backlash 2 also involving Michaels. But I think he had one more title defense at Bad Blood against Kane. But other than that, that was it. You know, he really had no other championship defenses. No other major championship defenses. Maybe one or two on Raw, but... There were so many feuds that he could have had, but they didn't have with him. I mean, look at the entire roster. He could have feuded with Christian or Chris Jericho or Matt Hardy, Kane. I mean, I already said Kane, but Edge, there were Randy Orton. I know he faced at SummerSlam, Batista. There were just a lot of other options they could have gone with before they, cha they, before they took the title off him so soon. But obviously, he was just a placeholder champion before they wanted to get the championship back on uh, Triple H in the fall by having Orton beat Benoit for the championship at SummerSlam. And by that point, Benoit was out of the title picture for good. He got one more title match the next night on Raw, lost the rematch, and that was it. By that point, Benoit was long removed from the championship picture, which is a shame. He should have gotten a longer reign, a more meaningful reign that was not focused around fucking Triple H, because he would get his reign of terror over the next you know, year anyway, so I thought it was kind of a waste. But regardless, great main event. Overall, another really good show for Vengeance. Um, quick recap here. In a nutshell, Rhino and Tajiri versus Coachman and Cade. Good match. Good fun match. Batista and Jericho, good. Tag team title match. Really fun. Hardy and Kane. Kind of slow, but not terrible. Edge and Orton. Great match. Women's match. Best women's match in Vengeance history up to this point. And the main event was also awesome. So, would I recommend to check out the show on the network? Absolutely. Uh, definitely watch it on the WWE Network in its entirety. If only, if you only have time for like one or two matches, then certainly the main event and or the Intercontinental Championship match between Edge and Randy Orton. So those are my thoughts on Vengeance 2004 as seen on the WWE Network. We will be back on Saturday, I think. I think this is going up on Wednesday, or I have no idea at this point. My brain is shut. I'm, I'm recording these so far in advance, I really have no idea, like I've said before. But um, anyway, my next video will be covering Vengeance 2005, a pay-per-view I have seen before. I actually own it on DVD. I bought it at a live event, I think Legends of Wrestling last June for like five bucks, and it was a really good show. So I can't wait to talk about that in my next WrestleRant video. But in the meantime and in between time, as always, you guys can find me on the Twitter at WrestleRant on the Facebook Facebook page at facebook.com backslash graham.jason.matthews right here on YouTube by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And be sure to check out the website at nextairwrestling.net. So until next time, guys, I'm Graham Jason Matthews, and I'll catch you folks down the road.